It's that time of year. It's the game. Florida State University versus the University of Florida. Here with a special preview of tomorrow's big game is WCTV Sports Director Bob Warren. For years, it has been called the game. This year, it has a new title, the Sunshine Sizzler. Round 28 in the ongoing state heavyweight championship of college football. Florida State against Florida. The schools this year sport the best combined record in the history of the series. The Gators are 8-1-1. The Seminoles are 8-2. It was a season born in a hurricane. Elena was kicking her heels headed towards the Gulf Coast. The Seminoles were themselves getting feisty for the season ahead. <laughs> On August 30th, with the winds and rains of Elena bearing down, the Seminoles began their 13-week odyssey. Dressed to the nines in their look-alike blazers, the tribe headed to New Orleans to open their season against Tulane. Despite the win, the head man wasn't happy. Fumble two times inside the 10-yard line going in. That's ridiculous because we, we get nothing. At least we could have got, we've done nothing else. We could do field goals and got six, and that was made it precarious. What would you say to him at halftime to turn the second half around? I couldn't quote it on the, the television. Whatever Bowden said, he got his team's undivided attention. He had to. Next stop, America's heartland, mighty Nebraska where Danny McManus sparkled, here hitting Darren Holloman to put the tribe ahead to stay. It was a near perfect mixture of offense and defense that worked the magic and made Tom Osborne's season opener a disaster. When Cletus Jones crashed in from three yards out, the Seminoles iced one of the year's most stunning upsets and Tallahassee went berserk. After a week's rest, it was time to open the home campaign against Memphis State with an on-the-muscle, in-your-face, black-and-blue defense. There's some talent on this team. Clearly, we abused our offensive line and our backs that were trying to protect our pass. They, they totally abused him. Yes, they totally abused us. They also totally abused Danny McManus. And boom, tight up under his chin, and it just knocked him out. As it turned out, for the rest of the season. Now it's going to be like a 51-yarder, and Danny McManus will be back, we understand. Okay. Relief pitcher Kurt Coker then rode to the rescue, sealing the Tigers' fate with a touchdown pass to Darren Holloman. I brought back and looked at Hassan and then went back over and threw to Darren. And I think look, look, looking him off is what, is what made the play. I don't know if I'll get gunshot have to wait and see to the game, you know, but that's part of the game. You're going to get hit back there. Just, you know, I just happen to get hit twice harder than anyone probably would imagine. Trouble was brewing. McManus was injured far worse than anyone imagined. On September 28th, Kansas came to town and the tribe stumbled until the fourth quarter. Untested rookie Chip Ferguson sent a bolt of electricity through the crowd, put the fear of God into the secondary with one swing of his arm. He's got a long arm, strong arm, very strong arm. He can throw it a mile. And uh, he, he, he was accurate. First play, play is in there, we let him throw one, he hit it. Then it was on to Auburn. I don't think we played against anybody that played any harder than Florida State did against us last year. We've, we've let them for 59 minutes for two years and gotten beat. And, uh, and so we, we've got to play better in the last minute. That's, that's the key to them. Hit behind the line, breaks tackle. Smith, reverse, Holloman, and That's it's fun. wide open, touchdown Florida State. At the H-back, here he comes. Washington on the reverse, that 14 way Dan has a lot of running room, touchdown. And it just went haywire in the fourth quarter, it was like twilight zone out there. I thought we'd win the ball game. The game, up the first 55 minutes, we were behind, what, seven points, something like that, or four points or something. So we were in it for 55 minutes, and they, they busted it wide open. Did they ever. 
The following week, it was back home for Tulsa. Chip Ferguson, he's a fine passer. On a delay, goes, and I still got the football. Sets up, throws into the end zone. Touchdown, Florida State. Ferguson fakes to the tailback, throwing deep into the flat. It is cut touchdown, Florida State. Back to throw is Gage, got a little time, and it is intercepted. Back to the 20. They scored the most points ever, 76. Seven days later in Chapel Hill, that same offense was non-existent until the fourth quarter, when Chip Ferguson hit Hassan Jones to tie it at 10-all. Derek Schmidt's field goal made it 13-10. They sealed it literally in the final seconds, when Tallahassee's Martin Mayhew intercepted a pass, danced and juked down the sidelines for the winning touchdown. The final, Florida State 20, North Carolina 10. The Tribe was now 6-1 and, and on the rise in the polls, but the acid test was a week away. The Miami Hurricanes were coming to town with Vinny Testaverde. On the line, a million-dollar payoff in a January 1st major bowl. First down, Testaverde going for it all, has a man, it's Blades. Touchdown, Hurricane! Testaverde was the difference, there was no doubt. You, you just have to say Testaverde was the difference now. You had a senior, first quarterback that has hurt us a lot more than Kozar ever hurt us. He's hurt us more. Kozar never hurt us like this guy does. Vinny Testaverde is an excellent quarterback after, uh, I think, the way we pressured him and pounded on him, and, you know, they came back and came back. The next time out, the Seminoles made South Carolina pay for the Miami loss. kind of like the Tulsa football game, where everything just fell into place. It's a shame you can't space that out. You know, I used 10 of those points the week before. I thought that the Carolina team would have a, a, a lot better defense than he did. But I think what happened was they lost their composure after we started scoring a little on them. They just fell apart, really. We just can't let this one, you know, look ahead and think, be thinking about other things. we got to be worried about West Carolina. There was nothing to worry about. The Catamounts were the homecoming offering for 1985. FSU feasted. With one eye on the Gators and the other on a bowl invitation, the Seminoles methodically took apart Western Carolina. Emerging star running back Keith Ross ground out more than 100 yards and scored twice to lead FSU to a 40-point victory. The home season was over. It was now time to wait for a bowl bid. It came a week ago Saturday. 8-2 Florida State invited to the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville on December 30th to face the 8-2 Oklahoma State Cowboys. The Gator Bowl will do two things for this team. You know, the Monday night television is a week after the pro Monday night's over, so it's always been a great rating night. I think this will be great for our seniors that uh, are looking for pro careers. And uh, as you mentioned, it'll be great for a young team that's uh, hopefully will be ranked very high next year. So, what began in a hurricane could end with that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow at Florida Field against the Gators. Part A of this story. In just a moment, we'll document the other side, the glittering season of those Florida Gators. It is serious business. Florida State, it has a little importance because it is the last game of the season. And that tends to be what a lot of people remember, the last thing you do. I think the people in the state live for it all year. You, this game uh, sits in your mind all year. You, uh, you have to, whoever loses it, has to live with it for a year because... Uh, uh, I'm sure the other fans are going to bring, bring it up to you. And I just think uh, the people that you run into contact all year long are going to remember Florida, Florida State. Don Evans, Channel 6, Eyewitness Sports. Thank you, Don. This year's game was 27 years in the making. Get ready to energize for a trip on the time machine. In the grand scheme of things, the Florida-Florida State series is a rather infant rivalry. There have only been 27 versions of the game. But oh my, have they jam-packed some action into those 27. Scott Atwell now takes us on a trip down memory lane. Florida, 
Florida State. This game does have a distinctive sound to it. Despite the Gators' dominance of the series, 20 wins to Florida State 6, there is a lot of history here, a history which began in 1958, 11 years after the Florida State College for Women became Florida State. Florida took the early advantage in this series, winning five out of the first six games. A 3-3 tie in 1961, though, was as good as a victory for the young Seminoles. But the real thing was not far off. The year was 1964. Johnson was in the White House, the Mercury program was a marvel of human achievement, and the Seminoles beat the Gators for the first time. Linebacker Bill McDowell intercepted a pass late in the game to snuff out a Gator comeback attempt. The Gator Bowl ring, you wear it, uh, Gator Bowl champions, but the main thing on there is his first to defeat Florida. rest of it, minor. Never FSU, never. That's what they came out of the locker room with. Came out, warmed up, went back in and put those jerseys on and on the back of them. Said, never FSU, never. Uh, I think that went to our advantage. And I can remember some relatives that were Gators that after we beat them that first time that uh, we didn't see them after the game. They were gone. And so, you know, they were serious about it too. The two teams traded off wins the next couple of years until the big drought, or the big bonanza, depending on how you look at it, began in 1968. The Gators began a stranglehold which lasted for nine straight seasons. It was such a shock by the time I got to Florida as a freshman in 68, um, even though I'm from the Miami area and really never focused on the Florida FSU rivalry, uh, those two games were still very well remembered at the University of Florida. And before every Florida FSU game, you were reminded of those two losses and that you didn't want to become the third loss to FSU. But in 1976, there arrived from the hills of West Virginia a man named Bobby Bowden. His first Gator encounter was a close loss, 33-26, to 26, but in the process, he found his quarterback-to-be, Jimmy Jordan. In 76, it was like, man, we're gonna, we might beat these guys. You know, all of a sudden, it's the fourth quarter, and we got a chance to beat Florida in Tallahassee. And, you know, we got them right there on our fingertips, and it just slipped away from us. But it was the harbinger of good things to come. After nine straight losses to the Gators, the Seminoles in 1977 lifted the lid on a four-game winning streak. The 77 contest went down at Florida Field. An outmanned Seminole squad surprised the Gators 37-9 as Jordan fired three scoring strikes to Roger Overby. Scott, you wouldn't believe it. The, half of the guys didn't even get recruited by Florida. Now, I'm not saying that we wanted to go to Florida even if we would have got recruited. I'm just saying we didn't get recruited. I think those guys on our team had more heart than any guys that I've ever seen on a football team because we didn't have the players on paper to beat Florida. But we went down there and beat them, and that was what was neat because it was like, okay, right, we're going to show these people on the other side that we could have played for their team too. Sidekick quarterback Wally Woodham was also part of the victory streak. He knows how kind history can be to the winners. When I was there, of course, four years, we did beat University of Florida three times. So uh, it, uh, it, the three years in a row there, it got kind of repetitious. And I guess I didn't appreciate it as much as these guys would now. But uh, for me, it was, it was really nice to be able to say you did beat University of Florida three years in a row. But in 1981, all of that came to an end. Now it was Florida's time to shine, and they did, to the tune of four straight. Well, I think we were very short of people in 79, and, uh, you know, it took us a couple of years to kind of shore up and get our quarterback situation. Wayne Peace was, a, you know, the biggest difference for us. In 1983, Pell and Peace worked a whammy on Florida State. The Gators scored their most points ever against the Seminoles, winning 53-14. to Last year, the two teams sloshed around in the mud before Florida prevailed 27-17. So that brings us up to today, and the key number here for the Seminoles is four. Four losses in a row. There isn't a single player on this team that has beaten the Gators, and for the seniors, that means the final quarter is at hand. We've got to beat them at least once, you know, at, you know my you know, collegiate career. At least one time, you know, we got to get them this year. And, um, I got to live with that, you know. If we, <laughs> we just got to beat them. I don't want to go home and have another miserable Christmas and have all my friends say, why did Florida beat you? Why did Florida beat you? Perhaps this Christmas, that question won't need answering. Scott Atwell, Channel 6 Eyewitness Sports at Florida State.
Thank you, Scotty. Next. Everybody, it was the hope of the Florida Gators to strive for five. They did, in a big way, with a big victory over Florida State this afternoon at Florida Field. 38-14 was the final score. We're preparing a very special piece for you. We'll have it in just a few moments. It was a graceful product. Neil Anderson swept around the right side. This time from three yards out for the score. The extra point made it 14-0 at the end of the first quarter. Gators. Florida State couldn't get the ball moving offensively. Sarasota native Derek Schmidt attempted a 38-yard field goal. To Florida this afternoon down in Gainesville. Bob Warren was with the Seminoles when it all began very early this morning. It was a long day's journey in tonight, only to find that the game was the same. It began with a 7.30 wake-up call at the Holiday Inn in Lake City, the Seminoles' official rest stop this year. An hour later, it was time to report for beef and bandages, breakfast. The menu, steak and eggs, toast and tape. Players alternated between eating and feeding. The arduous task of taping every player's ankles. Meantime, in an adjoining dining room, the public one, the game had already begun. Seminole faithful traveling with the club and a couple of busloads of Madison County Gators breaking morning bread, all the while whooping it up between sips of Sanka. There was no turning back now. It was 9.30, time to begin the drive into the Valley of Death. The buses were ready, the team loaded up, the coach on hand for a convoy, Seminole style. 57 minutes later, with sirens blaring and gators jeering, the tribe pulled into Florida Field. Their first visit since a 53-14 debacle two years ago. All the pieces seemed to fit. The players were loose, some with a little help. They were confident, relaxed, and ready. Bobby Bowden, for his part, reflected that mood in his pregame speech. At 12.17, he gathered the tribe. Hey, I don't want you to do is be tight. I want you to do two things for me. I want you to go out there and play and hit the field. Confident that we are the best football team in America. Now, who said we're not? Who can prove we're not? Then the second thing I want to ask you is do the best you can. Do the best you can. The only thing left to do was to do it. To put up or shut up. The Gators did all the talking. Florida broke out of the block so fast, Bobby Bowden called it shocking. Like here on a critical third and 14, when Kerwin Bell shook off a couple of tackles and hit Freddie Neal for 26 yards. It set up the first score. Graceville's Neal Anderson blazed in from six, four six. During the week, Bowden said if his team laid the ball on the ground, they may as well spend Saturday in Caravelle. They did. Victor Floyd on the bobble, Patrick Miller on the recovery at the 44. A few plays later, bullet back Neil Anderson hit the jackpot again. This time from three yards out, 14 to nothing Florida, still in the first. In the second quarter, it got worse, or better, depending upon your allegiance. Another Florida State turnover. This one by freshman Chip Ferguson. Really, I was more relaxed. Um, was, you know, we'd gone over the game plan, and there was no reason for me to be nervous. We had a good game plan in, and uh, we went out there, and things just didn't execute right. The interception led to this butte. The Gators took a page from Bobby Bowden's book. On the next snap, the old fake reverse. Bell with his best Houdini, and then he launched a 75-yard guided missile to Ricky Natil, who put a little suspense in it with a bobble. 21 to nothing Gators. The thing that gets the team down the most is a big play because it gets the crowd into it. Um, when they see a long pass completed, um, it gets the crowd going, it gets the other team down, I think as low as they can get. They were already at rock bottom. Bell did it again, to Natil again. 28 seconds left in the half from 14 yards out on the post, 28 to nothing Florida. The Gator Jaws had put the clamps on the Seminoles. It was over at halftime. The first sign of life for Florida State came in the third from the special teams. Freshman Deion Sanders fielded the punt, put a couple of Barishnikov moves on the Gators, and was gone. 57 yards for the touchdown. For the slightest moment, there was a glimmer of hope for the Seminoles. Chip Ferguson, on obvious busted coverage, walked into the end zone from four yards out to cut the lead to 28-14. to That with six minutes left in the third. But Bell rang their chimes one more time on a monster backbreaker. Frankie Neal on a fly pattern squirts the FSU secondary badly, this time for 82 yards. The score now, 35-14 Gators. All that was left were the postmortems. 
I think the way we played the first half, uh, probably both sides, offensively and defensively, against a very good football team, uh, that has to be the best performance uh, that we've had this fall and maybe since I've been here. A loss to them is a loss. They all hurt. You know, I'm not, I, mean, I ain't cutting my wrist about it, you know. Uh, but uh, but they, they all hurt. You know, I can't stand to lose to them. So it was a long day's journey into fright. For the fifth consecutive year, Florida State has misfired. The final score from Gainesville, the Florida Gators 38, Florida State 14. This is Bob Warren, Channel 6 Eyewitness Sports in Gainesville. Thank you, Bob. Great job. There was a big college basketball match. From Florida Field in Gainesville, the University of Florida Fighting Gators host their arch rivals, the Florida State Seminoles. Hello, everybody. I'm Jim Gallagher with Jim Yarbrough. We'll be bringing you all the action of today's game, and it is one of the nation's great rivalries. As a matter of fact, it divides husbands and wives, parents and children, brothers and sisters. That's right. There's been fisticuffs in some living rooms before about this ball game, and I, I uh, have a personal relationship with this rivalry because I had a brother and sister that went to Florida State, and there's a couple of other Gators besides me and my family, so it is a civil war. This morning at uh, around Gainesville, I saw a lot of husbands and wives, a lot of family members riding in the same car but having different colors on. So it's going to be a miserable ride for part of that family on the ride home. What about the game this afternoon? The Gators offensively haven't been able to generate a lot of points in the past couple of games. Well, the Gators have had problems getting on the scoreboard. You know, their first seven or eight games, they were averaging close to 30 points a game. Uh, recently, they've had problems getting on the board. Conversely, Florida State has no problems getting in the end zone. They're one of the top scoring machines in the country. So can the Gators regain that scoring punch? We'll find out. Both the teams have great records coming into it, and there's a lot of pride at stake. Well, the seniors here at the University of Florida have lost one game during their career, and they want to go out with that record intact. Uh, the seniors at Florida State have not beaten the Gators. They want to go out with a victory. So you're going to see a lot of leadership from the seniors on both teams, a lot of emotion from those seniors. One, and we'll be right back with a kickoff after this. Gator Bay, Florida's number one. In the field, you're looking at the University of Florida football team. They have just come out onto the field and joined with the seniors who are playing their last game as Gators. And of course, for all of these gentlemen, it's a meaningful time. Jim, and I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about because of the fact that they've given their all for four seasons. Well, I, I remember a lot about the particulars of my last game on Florida Field. We, we were able to beat the Miami Hurricanes. Larry Smith, our great All-American tailback, made a run into the end zone late into the ball game. It seems like one of the memories that you always take with you is your, your last appearance on Florida Field. Well, we're looking at some of the ones who are playing. Jack Gerzina, number 65, uh, the big senior from Fort Pierce, will be uh, playing his last game. And uh, some of the starters for the University of Florida include defensively left tackle Alonzo Mitz, who's had just a great career here, and Alonzo Johnson, the All-American linebacker from Springfield, Florida. Alonzo is very concerned about this game. We're talking about Mr. Johnson because of the fact that so many of the people that live around his hometown are Seminoles, so he really wants to win this one bad. And especially, too, I saw a comment he made earlier in the week that uh, he knows that Florida State likes to get the tailbacks around the corner, and Alonzo Johnson lives on that corner. So he's going to want to put a stop, put the brakes on that Seminole running game. Well, here's a full house crowd at Florida Field, and Coach Bobby Bowden leads his Florida State Seminoles out. They have a record of 8-2, and two, an excellent football team headed for the Gator Bowl. Bobby Bowden's been a winner everywhere he's gone. His winning percentage is a little bit over 700. He's batting 700 as a college coach. Tremendous career uh, Bobby Bowden's had. Weather at kickoff time, the temperature at 81 degrees as you look at the orange and blue flag of the Gators. The humidity 84%, the wind at 12 miles an hour, and it is out of the southwest. As we look at the Gator captains there, Miller, Anderson, Alonzo, Johnson, and uh, Florida's record 26-1-2 at Florida Field since 1981. Ray Criswell, also a captain for the Gators of Florida today, and John L. Williams, number 22, to the right of your screen. And for the 
Florida State Seminoles. It'll be Kirk Coker, Terry Warren, Stanley Scott, and Hassan Jones as captains today here at Florida Field in this renewal of one of the nation's great rivalries. And the home field advantage is a big factor today. The Gators losing one game over the last five years. The Seminoles coming in here on a on a roll offensively, being able to put up a lot of points on the board, having a lot of success this year, only losing two ball games. They're coming into Florida Field with a very positive feeling about their ball club. Of course, they're going on to the Gator Bowl. They've had a tremendous success. They they won a big game at Nebraska, had a disappointing loss to Auburn and Miami. But other than that, it's been a big year for the Seminoles. Well, for the Gators, if they win this afternoon, it would give them a consecutive nine one and one regular season record. That's what they were last year, too. It would also mark the third time in school history that a Gator team has won nine games in the regular season, 75 and 84 were the other year. Now, the Seminoles have won the toss, Jim Gallagher, but they've waived the right to make a decision to the second half, so the Gators made the decision to receive. The Gators will get the football, but the Seminoles did win the toss, so the Seminoles are looking to jump on that Gator offense from the moment the ball's kicked off this afternoon. Well, we're waiting for the start of this afternoon's ball game. Galen Hall along the side line has had just a great, great two years here at the University of Florida, and uh, in his two years at the University of Florida, he's done a lot of things that no other coach has ever achieved in the Southeastern Conference. He's the first head coach in conference history to go unbeaten in his first 16 games, and has a chance to achieve another SEC record with this victory over Florida State. He currently shows a 16-1-1 career record at the UF Helm, and he's got the opportunity of matching Ole Miss Johnny Vaught for the most victories by a coach in his first two years the Southeastern Conference head coaching position. Uh, just a fantastic job by Galen Hall since he took over the reins of the University of Florida's football program. So the Florida State Seminoles get ready to kick the football off and they will kick it away and you're looking at Wayne Williams and it will be Ricky Natiel, number 18. The kickoff man is Derek Schmidt for the Florida State University Seminoles as we get ready to get this afternoon's football game underway. Derek Schmidt, one of the best kickers in college football. Sarasota, Florida. Moves to it. And we are underway. It's going to be Ricky Natiel on the two. He's at the five. He's across the ten. Cuts out at the 15-yard line and up to the 21-yard line before he is brought down. Bringing him down was Eric Williams, number 17 for the Florida State University Seminoles. So the Gators go to work now as Kerwin Bell leads the team. And here you see the stats that he has achieved this year. Offensively, Anderson, Williams, Natiel, Ray McDonald, Rodney Jones in the skill positions. Across the front, Williams, Zimmerman, McCarthy, Jimmy Davis, and Jack Gerzina. And you know, it's funny, we talk about the skill positions. There better be a lot of skill in that offensive line this afternoon or the Gators will be in trouble. Well, they've had to make a lot of changes. Changes, and I think that each time they've risen to the occasion, and here is Kerwin Bell chatting the signals. The give-off goes to Neil Anderson, cuts outside, and he is out of bounds on the far side at the 26-yard line. We need to mention that Sam Garland is getting a shot uh, as a starter this afternoon. Big Sam Garland is a senior playing left tackle for the Gators. Defensively for the Noles, Gray, Williams, Jones, Stroud, McGowan, Nichols, and from Houston, Texas, Garth Jacks, Martin Mayhew, Stanley Shriver, Greg Newell, and Eric Williams are the deep backs. It'll be second from the five at the 26-yard line for the Florida Gators in the eye formation with John L. Williams, 22, is the up back, and Ray McDonald, nine, the motion man. The give goes to Anderson, and he's got the first down. Neil Anderson, the ball carrier, the senior from Graceville, Florida, the most prolific rusher in the history of the University of Florida. Well, the Gators get a down right out of the shoot. They've had problems getting off to a fast start, but this afternoon they get a first down in their first series. First and ten. The ball at the 32-yard line. Neil Anderson. He and John L. Williams, they call them Rural Express. Anderson from Graceville and John L. Williams from Palatka. Anderson gets the ball again and to the 36-yard line. So uh, Florida has kept the football thus far on the ground. We are just into the first quarter. 14 minutes and five seconds left to play in the first period. No score.
score. Neil Anderson uh, this week named all-conference at the tailback position, the leading career rusher in the University of Florida history. You know, he's going to be facing some guys up front that the Seminoles are very proud of. Isaac Williams, Todd Stroud, Gerald Nichols. A lot of experience down front for the Knowles on defense. Second down at the 36-yard line now, and John L. Williams on the counter gets the carry and goes to the 38-yard line before he is stacked up. Gerald Nichols, the junior right tackle from St. Louis, Missouri, brings him down for the Florida State University Seminoles. John L. has had an excellent career and all-purpose back here at Florida. He is a fine blocker, pass catcher, and excellent runner inside. If the Florida State Seminoles were in the Southeastern Conference, they would rank fourth in total defense behind the Gators, Auburn, and LSU. They give up 306 yards a game, so they've got a strong defensive unit on the field. Third and two at the 39-yard line now for the Gators, and Neil Anderson gets the call trying to turn outside and does and gets the first down, bumped out of bounds on the far side in front of the FSU bench by the strong side linebacker, Fred Jones. Garth Jacks, number 84, almost making the play in the backfield, but Neil Anderson was able to escape and pick up that first down. Just a lot of natural ability by the Florida tailback. First down and 10 at the 43-yard line as the University of Florida controls the football in the opening moments of the football game in front of a sellout crowd, I would imagine, here at Florida Field. We don't have that word officially, but I don't think there's an empty seat in the house. Might be a record crowd today. Split backfield now behind Kerwin Bell. The pitch going to John L. Williams, and he's across the 45 to the 47-yard line. Flag on the play. Bringing him down, Todd Stroud, the nose guard, and Stanley Shriver, the strong safety. Darrell Grade, number 65, the Knowles senior outside linebacker, doing a nice job turning that play in. Looks like the Gators uh, gave a little pot penalty and are going to be set back. So the officials will march it off for the hold against the Florida Gators. Let's see if we can take a peek at the action. Isaac Williams on a slant. There you see number 65, Darrell Gray. I don't think we picked up the holding penalty, but the umpire picked it up, and that's the important uh, call. I saw two nice blocks there by Tom Petty, 85, and also by Neil Anderson. John L. Williams ranking third on the Gators' all-time rushing list. 2,389 yards coming into today's game. Well, the Gators have yet to put the ball in the air. Perhaps this might be the first time of the game. First and 18 at the 35-yard line, and they are in the I formation, still operating in their own territory. They give off to Neil Anderson. He spins off one man and goes to the 36-yard line before he's brought down by FSU. Gerald Nichols, the first man in to hit him along with the weak side linebacker Paul McGowan, sophomore from Winter Park. That's your part of the world. Yeah, I live in Winter Park. I saw Paul McGowan play some great high school football for the Winter Park Wildcats, and he's done a super job at Florida State. He's just a sophomore. Number 38, Paul McGowan. 12 minutes and 8 seconds to play first quarter. No score in our football game at Florida Field. The Gators and the Seminoles. Second and 18. For Florida, split backfield behind Bell. He drops the throw. First pass of the game. Throws. He's got John L. Williams right at the 42-yard line. And the completion to the 42-yard line for John L. Williams puts the Gators in a little bit better position right now. But there's still 11 yards to go to get a first. They have advanced the football to the 42-yard line. And the Seminole defense has been strong this afternoon. Well, and the Knowles had a lot of success getting to Vinny Testaverde, the Miami quarterback. Uh, they got to him 10 sacks. We saw that time some pressure from Isaac Williams, number 45, from the outside. Here's Kerwin Bell looking at the Knowles defense, and he's under some pressure and throws, and it is complete to Frankie Neal. First down at the 31-yard line. Neal, the junior from Okeechobee on a post. Beautiful reception. Caught four touchdown passes this year. Watch Kerwin Bell's ability to escape the sack. You see coming from the outside, some pressure from the Seminoles, but uh, Kerwin Bell has that ability to, to avoid the sack and get rid of the football. 27-yard completion. First and 10 for the Gators at the 31-yard line, and they're in FSU territory. FSU with a three-down lineman. 
three linebackers, I formation for Florida. The pitch to John, no, no rather, is to Neil Anderson, who goes to the 30-yard line, so a one-yard gain on the play. Fred Jones, a strong side linebacker, brings him down. Real nice job by Fred Jones. He was knocked to his knees temporarily, bounced right back up immediately to make the tackle. Fred Jones is a junior from Miami, Florida. There we're seeing Bobby Bowden's career record, 154-64-2 and two at FSU, a tremendous record as well. His four victories over Florida, the most for any coach in FSU history. Ten minutes, 15 seconds to play first quarter, no score. Second down nine, ball on the 30-yard line. Gators in possession, and Kerwin Bell looks to throw. He does, he's got John L. Williams. John L's inside the 20, he's at the 15, the 10, and he's down to the five-yard line, the six before he's brought down. Well, John, John L. Williams makes a lot of things happen. Well, every Saturday afternoon, it seems like John L. Williams is in the flat by himself. Look at the Knowles rushing, you see. Rushing by the inside linebacker, Fred Jones comes in. John L escapes into the flat, untouched. Watch this little wrinkle. 220 pounds, and he's got the ability to make that quick little move. Look at the hustle by Garth Jacks. Garth Jacks coming from behind to make the tackle on the Gator, or excuse me, on the Seminole six-yard line. First and goal at the six-yard line. The pitch goes to Neil Anderson, trying to turn it outside. He's inside the five, and he's in the end zone. Touchdown, Florida. The Gators draw first blood this afternoon at Florida Field against the Florida State Seminoles. A lot of speed by Neil Anderson on the corner right there, Jim Gallagher. Here goes the pitch to the tailback. 900 yards, over 900 yards this year for this young man. John L. gets a little bit of a block on Garth Jacks. Garth can't make the tackle. Neil just dives into the corner of that end zone for a big six. We go for the extra point. It is Jeff Dawson, Lantana, Florida. The hold will come from Ray Criswell Bird, the snapper. His foot is into it, and it is good. And Florida leads FSU 7 to nothing. We'll be back with more after this. 7 to nothing lead. You know, sometimes the guys that start a fight are the guys that only get on the field three or four times a ball game. They don't mind wasting their energy, but the guys on offensive defense need to save themselves as we look at the offensive starters for the Seminoles. Chip Ferguson, a freshman, gets the starting nod at quarterback. He's done an excellent job coming in late in the season. The give off goes to the tailback. Straight up the middle, Chuck Wells, and he is stacked up at the line. Leon Pennington, the first guy to greet him there, and there's a flag on the play. Well, and defensively for the Gators, Miller, Duhart, Pennington, Brown, Armstrong, Williams, and Alonzo Johnson. The deep back, Stacy Knight, White, and Williams. What we have to realize about this Seminole offense is they, they have a rushing game that if, again, they were in the Southeastern Conference, would be number three in the conference behind strong teams like Auburn and Georgia and we know what kind of running games Auburn and Georgia has so the Knowles are real proud of their running game actually they've got 900 more yards rushing the football than the Gators have and they're going at the Gators on this first play but they meet a stone wall look at Alonzo Johnson Alonzo Mitts well the penalty was against Florida for a personal foul and it moves the football to the 35 yard line and gives them first and 10 at the 35. Chip Ferguson, a freshman from Spartanburg, South Carolina. You don't see, this guy's not a redshirt freshman, he's a true freshman. Well, they've used four different quarterbacks so far this year, and Ferguson at the end of the season has emerged as the starter, and uh, the give off now by Ferguson goes to his tailback, Victor Floyd, a freshman from Pensacola, and he goes to the 40-yard line before Pennington and Alonzo Johnson bring him down for the Gators. Again, as a point of reference, as we look at Victor Floyd, seven yards per carry. Now, he doesn't have the big numbers, 900 yards uh, individually, but that's only because the Knowles alternate tailbacks. Victor Floyd, Keith Ross, Tony Smith, a lot of quality at that tailback position for the Knowles, and they rotate those young men in and out of the ball game. Second and five at the 40 for the Seminoles as the Gator defense digs in. Florida with four down linemen, and uh, Ferguson again gives off to the running back. On the play. Let's see who recovered. The give off was to Victor Floyd, and there's a scramble. 45-yard line. So a big play defensively now for the Gators on that fumble. 
Alonzo Johnson comes up with a football. Let's see what happens here. Ferguson gives the ball to his tailback. Victor Floyd. Victor stripped to the football. Jarvis Williams has a shot at it. He doesn't come up with it. Jamie Dukes is fighting for the football. It looks like he and Alonzo Johnson had a struggle for the ball, and Alonzo came up with it. The Gators obviously have great field position because of that turnover. First and 10 at the 45-yard line of FSU for the University of Florida Fighting Gators. Bell at the quarterback position. Gives off to Neil Anderson, comes to the near side, and he is across the 40 to the 39-yard line before FSU knocks him out of bounds. Paul McGowan, the weak side linebacker, takes him out. And Stanley Scott, number 83, had a shot at Neal in the backfield, but Neal was able to get away. Watch Scott make a dive for Neal right there, but Neal runs through the tackle. Garth Jacks can't tackle him with the arm. Neal Anderson, the big, strong tailback, picks up about six yards. Nice blocking job by John L. Williams, second and four at the 39-yard line now for the University of Florida Gators. They go with a split backfield and receivers left and right. As FSU... Puts five men up front. The pitch goes to John L. Williams, and he is stacked up as he hits the line of scrimmage. Stanley Scott, the senior right tackle for Drayton, makes the hit. A flag on the play. Seven minutes and 34 seconds to play first quarter. Florida leads 7-0. On this play, nullifying a great play by Stanley Scott, who made the tackle in the backfield. Five yard mark on. Here we see big Jeff Zimmerman, Jim Gallagher, named to the Camp All American team. And what a tribute to that uh, fine offensive tackle. Big, strong Jeff Zimmerman. He's done a great job all year long and during the uh, middle of the season. Had some injury problems, but has come back. And I think. Unless you're with Florida football every week, you don't realize how tough it's been for that offensive line this year. And Jeff Zimmerman, as you mentioned, has played hurt many a Saturday afternoon. First hurt. and ten. At the 34-yard line. Bell chants the signals. The pitch to Anderson cuts back. He's across the 30. He's at the 25. He's across the 20 and comes out of bounds on the near sideline at the 16-yard line. Stanley Shiver runs him out. The strong safety for the Florida State Seminoles. Of line just came off on a wave or like a wave on that previous play. Very impressive. Watch that offensive line blow out. Watch John L. throw his block, giving Neal the opening to cut back. And with that speed, once he penetrates the line of scrimmage, he's going to pick up 10 or 15 yards. Picked up 19, first and 10 at the 15 yard line for the Gators. I formation now. Bell looks over FSU. Bell's give goes to John L. Williams, and John L. gets a couple of yards inside the 15-yard line, but FSU is right there. Fred Jones, the strong side linebacker, is the man that hit him and got some help there, too, from Scott. Fred Jones, the linebacker, number 55, doing a nice job for the Knowles making that play. Uh, Neil Anderson is approaching that 1,000-yard marker, Jim Gallagher. Uh, he'll be the only the second back in the history of the University of Florida to get 1,000 yards in one season. There we see John L. Williams, who's made that uh, possible. Neil Anderson is approaching that record. It's second down and eight on the 13-yard line now for the Gators. And Kerwin Bell looks to throw. tripped him up the only guy that was there well again the Knowles are getting caught you see Fred Jones there letting Anthony Williams escape into the flat and Anthony has those wide receiver hands just like John L. Williams does coming out of that backfield that's a that's a tough offense to stop when you have a fullback that can catch anything near him he was doing his Edwin Moses imitation trying to leap over him there yeah, he thought he was a hurtler didn't he first and goal at the three yard line for the Gators I formation Anthony Williams is the up back Neil Anderson at the top of the eye the pitch goes to Anderson off And picks up his second touchdown of the afternoon. Runs right into the end zone, and Florida leads it 13 to nothing. The try for the extra point is up next. Again, look at this offensive line. Look at big Jeff Zimmerman. Look at John L. Williams. Look at Tom Petty, the tight end. The tailback dances into the end zone untouched. 
try for the extra point. Ray Criswell, the holder. Jeff Dawson, the place kicker, waits for the snap. Boots it, and it is good. With the score, Florida 14, FSU nothing. We'll be back. Florida, and you know he has got to be high on the shopping list for a lot of professional football teams. What an afternoon he's having and what a great career he's had at the University of Florida. And Neil Anderson will graduate in May. He's been here four years. They say an athlete can't do that, but he's going to do it. Deep kickoff, and it goes out of the end zone. John David Francis, the freshman walk-on kicker from Stark, Florida, as Keith Ross watch it roll away. And so it will come out to the 20-yard line. Well, we're seeing that uh, drive five plays, 35 yards, started with a turnover. Alonzo Johnson coming up with the fumble recovery. Neil Anderson ending the drive, sprinting into the end zone from three yards out. So far today, Florida's had the football for seven minutes and 45 seconds, and FSU has had it for a minute and 10 seconds. You're looking at Bobby Bowden a moment ago talking to Chip Ferguson, his freshman quarterback from Spartanburg, South Carolina, and there was a flag on the last play. The call is going to go against the Florida State Seminoles, and so it is going to be marched back to the 10-yard line as we go to the sideline, and John Nugent for this report. Jim, and speaking with the Gator coaches before their game, they're very concerned with Florida State's play-action passing game. Look for the Gators to double the wideouts as much as possible. One other thing, you guys said it would get cool down here in November. 104 <laughs> degrees on the turf. Gentlemen. Sorry about that. First and 10 at the 10, Chip Ferguson at the quarterback position. And his give-off goes to the fullback, Cletus Jones, straight up the middle, and he is stacked up. Bring him down, Alonzo Mitz and Alonzo Johnson. Well, again, we need to mention the Knowles are very proud of their running game. They come into Florida Field averaging 230 yards per game on the ground, but so far they haven't had any success. John Nugent was mentioning the uh, play-action pass. The Seminoles like to get the ball to their wide receivers. Hassan Jones, number 88, is one of the best wide receivers in the country. Second down nine at the 11-yard line now. FSU with one first down this afternoon, Florida with seven, and the give-off is going to go to the tailback, and that is Smith, Tony Smith, and he rips off the right side before Leon Pennington brings him down. Tony Smith was one of the greatest high school career uh, rushing tailbacks in Dade County history, and he's getting a chance to shine this year at Florida State doing a nice job. Jim and I will be picking our selection of the Mid-State Federal Player of the Game in the fourth quarter. I gotta tell you, Neil Anderson looks pretty good right now. Third and one on the 20-yard line, or rather third and 11 on the 20-yard line, as Ferguson gives off, and again the give off goes to Smith, and Smith is stacked up after a couple of yards. Alonzo Johnson right there, All-American linebacker. We talked about Neil Anderson being looked at by the Pro Scouts. Boy, you know this guy is gonna be wanted. Well, that speed is a, a primary attribute that you need to play defense, and Alonzo Johnson has it in abundance. We see Lewis Berry coming on the field, a fine punter, 42.7 yards on the average. Ricky Natio, fine return man for the University of Florida, as he stands back deep. And now we have an FSU timeout on the field. We'll give you the situation, four minutes and ten seconds to play in the first quarter, and the Gators lead by a score of 14 to nothing over Florida State by virtue of two running touchdowns by Neil Anderson. Well, before the game, we were expecting to see a powerful running game by the Seminoles. The, the Gators have had problems running the football. You know, they rank seventh in the Southeastern Conference running the football. They're much more potent when they throw the football down the field, but this afternoon, the Gators come out of the chute with a great running game. You can win a 1986 Ford Ranger, the Sunny's Fighting Gator Truck. Just register at any participating Sunny's Real Pit Barbecue Florida location. You could also win a Suzuki motorbike, a Columbia bicycle, or a Toshiba jam box. So go buy Sonny's today. I think the Knowles had a mental breakdown right here. One of their specialty team members forgot to get on the field, so they had to waste a timeout to have 11 men out there for the punt. So FSU's Barry, their booter, stands back there at about the 10-yard line, ready to kick it away. The line of scrimmage is the 23 as he gets it off. And it is long and high. 
And McKeel chases it back and takes it down at about the 20 and has to run backfield, turns up and to the 21-yard line. So an excellent kick by FSU. Their special teams do a good job getting down. Latiel does his job on the return, giving the Gators good field position at the 21-yard uh, line, and John Hadley brought him down for FSU. Joey Nicoletto uh, gave his body up out there on that punt return and is, and is slightly injured and is, uh, needs some assistance to leave the field. Those specialty team guys are called kamikazes, and uh, they really go after each other. That kick was a 65-yarder. Ten attempts, 54 yards this afternoon for Neil Anderson. He needs seven yards to reach 1,000. Neil comes into this ball game uh, averaging 4.4 yards per carry. This afternoon, he's carrying it at a 5.4 per, per carry clip. First and 10 at the 21-yard line. As Kerwin Bell looks at the FSU defense, the Seminoles with the three down linemen, the two outside linebackers, and the two inside backers on the gap, and the give-off goes to the tail deck, and that is Neil Anderson straight up the middle. Lenny Chambers, the nose guard, makes the hit after Anderson picks up a couple. He's about five yards away now from the 1,000-yard plateau. The Knolls alternate two strong seniors at that nose guard position, Todd Stroud, Lenny Chambers. Lenny Chambers coming up with a play that time, number 68 from Deland, Florida. Second at nine at the 22-yard line for the University of Florida Gators. They sit on a 14-0 lead in the first quarter. High formation being used by Florida. As Bell pitches to Anderson, Anderson turns upfield and goes to the 24-yard line. Paul McGowan makes the tackle on Neil Anderson. Well, it's nice to see Greg Cleveland back in action, number 64, at offensive tackle for the Florida Gators. Greg Cleveland's been out with some knee problems most of the most of the year, but the seniors getting his final shot out there this afternoon from Orlando Edgewater. Greg Cleveland, number 64. Two minutes and 50 seconds to play in the first quarter. Florida 14, Florida State nothing. Third down and eight. All spotted at the 23-yard line as Kerwin Bell sends Anderson in motion, gives off to Donald Williams on the ball. He's got the first down. by John L. Williams, Bill Richardson. The left cornerback from Fort Walton Beach makes the hit for FSU. Well, you know the Knolls can put the pressure on the quarterback. They just get caught in a twist right here. A big block is made on Fred Jones, and John L. Williams is in the secondary very quickly. A nice call by the Gators, and they caught Florida State stunning and were able to take advantage of the, of the stunt and come up with a big play on the draw. First and 10 now for the Gators as they keep possession of the football and keep their drive going for the I formation. And now Kerwin Bell drops the throw and unloads long. He's looking for Ray McDonald, and it is incomplete. A little bit high. He would have needed two step ladders to get up there and get that one, and Martin Mayhew was covering him pretty well for FSU. One point needs to be made, though. He had the time. He had a lot of protection. The line did a fine job. And as we mentioned, the Knowles know how to get to the quarterback. They gave Vinny Testaverde from the Miami Hurricanes all kind of problems. Kerwin Bell has the same ability or more than Testaverde has, though, and if he gets the time, he's going to deliver that football. Second down, 10 at the 34-yard line now for the Gators. As Bell waits for the snap with the eye formation, the pitch goes to Neil Anderson, and Neil Anderson at the 35 outside, still on his feet across the 40, and out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Very close for the first down. Greg Newell, the sophomore free safety from Panama City, takes him back, and he has just picked up enough yardage to get 1,000 yards in a season. Second back in Florida history. Watch the blocking at the point of attack. Big Jeff Zimmerman, John L. Williams making the block on the outside. Ray McDonald now is downfield fighting Deion Sanders off. Neil Anderson picks up another six yards because Ray McDonald was hustling downfield. Oh, Just to yeah. show how much acceleration he has, Florida State has some of the quickest deep backs in the country. And he was right there speed-wise. Third and one. The give-off goes to Anderson John L. Williams, and he has stacked up. Let's see if he's got the first down. Well, it's very close because Fred Jones made a great one-on-one -on -one tackle. Fred Jones fighting off the block, but it's going to be a close call. Perhaps they're going to measure. No, they're singling fourth down right now. 
Didn't get enough uh, yardage, and so the Gators are going to kick away. Ray Criswell is in the football game. Watch Fred Jones, number 55, fill the hole. Jimmy Davis is coming over to trap. Greg Cleveland misses Fred Jones. He was looking for him, but found him too late. Fred Jones stepped right up and made the tackle. Curtis Thomas, 22, waits for the football for FSU. He's at the 15, and filled out of the 17-yard line. Oh, the Gators special teams were down in a hurry, and taking him was number 97, Roland Cummings, and also number 36, Anthony Williams. That's a great stand by the Florida State defense. You know, uh, old momentum is, is very fickle, and the Gators had it on their side, but the Knowles rose to the occasion and stopped the Gators right there, forcing a punt. Well, Ray Criswell got off a very nice one, a 43-yarder for the Gators. A minute eight to play first quarter. Florida 14, and the Seminoles nothing, and the Knowles go to work offensively. Florida's defense digs in, and Ferguson at the controls. Now Ferguson rolling out the pass, throws out in the flat. Number 44 hit at the 21-yard line by Ricky Knight, a strong safety from right here in the city of Gainesville. The Knowles do not get the ball to the fullback anywhere near as often as the Gators do. They like to throw the ball more often to their wideouts, but on this occasion, they're going to get the ball out to Wells, and it looks like he never had possession of that ball. But they're going to give the reception to him anyway. At the 21, it's second down and seven now for the Seminoles, and that's the first first down for FSU. Rolling out now is Ferguson, and he's looking and throws. Almost picked off by Florida. Almost picked off by Curtis Stacy. Darren Holloman, 24, was the intended receiver, and Stacy did a great job and almost picked it off. Watch his strong safety coming on the blitz, but he's picked up very nicely by Tony Smith. Chip Ferguson continues to roll out, looking down the field. Young man's just a freshman, but he throws it right in the midst of three Gators. Curtis Stacy almost picks that ball off. With 23 seconds to go in the first quarter, it's third down seven on the 21-yard line for FSU as they come out of the huddle. 88, Hassan Jones to the left side to the bottom of your screen as Ferguson goes with a split backfield. And the Florida with the three-down lineman trying to put the pressure on as Ferguson drops way, way back, throws a short one out to Wells, incomplete on the safety valve. Florida had him pretty well covered there, too. That brings up fourth down, and the Seminoles will have to boot away. But the Florida defense did an excellent pursuit job. Well, you're looking at the number one defense, total defense in the Southeastern Conference. Charlie Bailey doing a great job in his first year here in Gainesville as a defensive coordinator. There you see Lewis Berry coming on the field. The Seminoles are forced to punt. The Gator defense rises to the occasion. Ricky Natio, the University of Florida return man from Newberry, Florida. 5'9", 180, a junior. Been a mainstay for this great Gator football team in 85. As Lewis Berry boots it, it goes high. A little wobbly. Natio at the 32-yard line, at the 35, outside at the 40, inside, and across to the 40 five-yard line or 44-yard line before he's brought down, but there was a flag on the play. Taking him out was Paul McGowan for the University of Florida. Or rather, for FSU. Yeah, Paul McGowan hustling down the field right there. We do have a flag on the play. We're going to have to wait. It's a clip against the Gators. The Gators were in a position to get great field position again, but they're going to be backed up somewhat. The Seminoles are have a break. So it's going to be marched off now against the Gators with just five seconds left to play in the first quarter. And the Gators leading 14 to nothing, but that's going to set the football way back to the 28-yard line. There you see Paul McGowan getting ready to make the tackle, and uh, Steve Stipe makes a middle error coming up and hitting... Uh, Number 42, Cletus Jones, the, the great fullback from the Seminoles in the back, an obvious clip. First and 10 at the 29-yard line now for Florida. As Kerwin Bell pitches to Anderson, Anderson goes to the 30-yard line, picks up a couple of tough yards. Gerald Nichols brings him down for FSU. And that is the end of the first quarter. Gators 14, Seminoles nothing. We'll be right back. begin the 
the second quarter as we look at the University of Florida Gator offense. And we've got to pay some tribute to what that offensive line has been able to accomplish this afternoon and how they have allowed Mr. Neil Anderson to have an excellent first quarter. Well, they're off to a great start. Obviously, we got three quarters to go, but that offensive line has been the whipping boy a lot of times this season. Despite the fact the Gators have had a tremendous year, there's always Monday morning quarterbacking going on and saying, well, if we could have blocked so-and-so, if we could have done this and that. But that offensive line uh, is doing a super job here this afternoon with that running game. The passing game, they've done well consistently all year. The running game is kind of misfired from time to time. Second and nine at the 30 for the Gators. Eye formation as Kerwin Bell looks to throw. And he's going long, looking for Ray McDonald too far downfield and McDonald getting pretty good coverage there from Eric Williams 17 the right side quarterback from Safety Harbor Ray McDonald a senior from Belle Glade Florida playing his last football game at the University of Florida 5'11 185 great 